We've had a lot of questions about how we do our budget, so I wanted to go ahead and show you how we uh, really started with ours. This box here, this is the very first box, this is your income. This is going to be the easiest box you fill out because it is how much money you make. This is going to be the box where you add in if you're a server, your tips, your wages, you know, anything uh, re that you're going to actually make from your job. Uh, some people will have, you know, four different weeks. Some people like we only get paid once a month, but you're going to add all of your income. This is going to be your overall budget, not a weekly budget, your overall budget. So everything you make, you're going to put right here. If you have variable income, it is good to take the lowest that you have made over the last six months and use that as your base. So once you know how much your income is, now we're going to come into uh, this box. All right, this is the box where everybody tells you to get out your credit card statements, get your bank statements out, uh, take a look at your online banking, because it matters. Everything that you owe, you really need to put in here. You don't want to miss something because then it's going to throw off your budget. You know, this is going to be everything from your house payment, insurance, you know, um, your credit cards, student loans, Hulu, you know, anything that you physically pay every month that is a debt or a service that you pay for needs to go in here. So it is smart to get out your bank statements and your credit card statements so you know really what it is you're paying for every single month. So this one here is crucial that you know who you owe, how much you owe every single month. So what's going to happen is you're going to take your total for your income, you're going to add up all of your bills, and you're going to subtract that amount from your income. That's going to be your first subtotal. This is going to be the money you have left to take care of yourself for the rest of the month. Now for us, our cash envelopes, this is where the variable spending comes in. This is our groceries, our gas, our miscellaneous. Um, you know, that is all included in our cash envelopes. These bills up here, we have a hybrid system. I pay all of these bills by the internet. I pay them online. This goes into our account and out of our account. But this part of our budget, this is where we pay uh, and use cash. These are my cash envelopes. I pull out money for the categories that I can control with cash. And we have six categories. You may have less, you may have more. But this is the spending that you're not real sure how much you're gonna spend every month, but you're gonna have a really good guess. Like for us, we're a family of four, so we figure $100 per person per month for food. So for us, ours is going to be 400. And I'm gonna show you in our budget, but we're just gonna talk about this really quickly on the sheet. And then gas, um, take a look at your statements and find out how much a month you're paying for gas. Gas is going up across the board. You're probably going to need a little extra in there. So these are the spending that um, you are you have control over. You know you can choose to have an eating out category, but don't eat out. So you save the money. So this category really you're going to have to work on what works for you. Uh, what what is it you can pay with cash? So now now that we've had our income. We've had our bills. We know how much money we have left over. Now we're going to add up all of our cash envelopes and subtract that from the money we had left. Okay. So hopefully we still have money here because we're going to come over here. And this is very, very important. This category here. If this is the very first time you've done this, if you do not have an emergency fund, this is where pretty much I think you should stop 
and create this emergency fund. Across the board, I mean across the country, um, financial advisors are saying that approximately 40% of everyone in the country cannot handle a $400 emergency. Now, Dave Ramsey, um, he's a famous financial uh, advisor, he recommends that you have a $1,000 emergency fund set up because let's face it, if you don't have something to fall back on, coming back over here to your credit cards, you're probably going to go ahead and get into more debt if you have an emergency. So after you've done, you figured your income, you figured your actual bills, I mean what you owe folks, and then you've taken your cash envelopes, you know, for yourself, for your living expenses. This emergency fund, if you do not have a thousand dollars saved up, um, what we did is we put anything we had left into the emergency fund until we came up with a thousand dollars. Is a thousand dollars enough? That's up to you. You know what disasters happen in your life. For us, our disasters tend to be over a thousand dollars. So we set our emergency fund at fifteen hundred. And until we hit fifteen hundred dollars tucked away for that that inevitable that inevitable emergency that was coming, that's where our budget stopped. But once we had that figured out, we had it saved away. Then we started in on our sinking funds. So after we had our living expenses, whatever was left after that, we started our sinking funds. Now for us, that sinking funds are tiny funds. Well, they don't have to be tiny, but they're funds for things that are gonna come up in your life that you know about. Holidays, birthdays, uh, insurance payments, big tax payments, anything you know that is in the future but you can break up in monthly savings chunks to create your goal uh, ours are christmas birthdays the water heater you know we have things like that in our sinking funds and after the sinking funds if we had anything left that goes towards our extra payment for our debt we carry debt, unfortunately, you know, we are not debt free yet. We hope to be one day, but it's not this day. So after we have figured our income, we have taken out our, our real honest expenses where we owe folks. We've taken out our living expenses for our cash envelopes. We have funded our sinking funds for our Christmas and our birthdays. Then anything we have left, that goes right onto our debt and at the end of the day we will have zero dollars left because every single dollar that we brought in on income has a job so every dollar we have in is going to be somewhere on this sheet working for us so at the end of the day here to make sure that you have figured correctly, you're going to take your income, minus your bills, minus your cash envelopes, minus your sinking funds, your emergency money, and anything extra you can put on debt. And once you take all of those things off of your income, you should have zero dollars floating around because every dollar has a place. It has a job and you know exactly where it should be. All right, so let's go through an example because we, we went through that pretty fast. So one of my daughters, this is pretty much based on, you know, kind of an average month for her. So for her, she gets paid twice and on, on her low month, she made $2,000 for the month, which was great for her. Then, oh, the category she hates, the bills. All right, we went through everything she had and she has rent, she has her utilities, her auto insurance, we have our credit card payment. And I will mention to you a little something about the credit card payment um, after we're done. She has her student loan, 
cell phone, TV service, and Netflix. Okay, so every month, these are the actual bills she owes somebody that she needs to pay. So if we add all of these up, this is going to be $1,359, okay? She has $2,000 in income. Now we're going to take out $1,359 because this is what she owes. That gives her $641 left, okay? So when we started looking into cash envelopes, we have $641 left in her budget to play with. So for her, groceries, um, because she's picky, uh, we figure in our family $100 per person. Uh, she wants $175, that's fine. She thinks $150 in gas is pretty much her low end, so we're gonna go with that for now. It's probably gonna increase. $50 for health and beauty, $40 for eating out, and $25 for miscellaneous. You know, that could be a coffee or, you know, something like that. So if you add up her cash envelopes, these are things she's going to pay with actual cash. That is going to be $440. We had $641 to start with, minus $441. That's going to leave us with $201. Okay, now she is lucky enough that she already has her emergency from this one. She already has her emergency fund set up. She's already funded here. So she's moving on to her sinking funds. So for the sinking funds, we had $201 left. She wants to save $30 for the holidays. $20 for a future vacation and $20 for birthdays and for her I think that's a good uh, starting point for these so that if you add these up that's $70 we had 201 to start with minus 70 that leaves her $131 now some budgets are going to go oh great we have hundred and thirty one dollars and you just you know good luck to you but in our the way we do things for our budget we don't leave that up to chance it's hundred and thirty one dollars of hard-earned money that we want to work for us now over here we know we have credit card debt of a you know when she's paying hundred and twenty five a month so we have $131 left in our budget. And because we are, our ultimate goal here is to be debt free, she's going to make an extra debt payment. I have to forgive my writing. I'm writing kind of sideways on her credit card. And that's going to be $131. So for her extra debt payment, she's going to use the whole $131. We have $131 left in our budget. Now we have zero. We have zeroed out our budget. Every single dollar has a job for her. Now, could she have maybe saved, you know, half? If she did half here and then maybe half in her to go to extra savings, she certainly could have. But her goal is to get out of debt. So she's paying every last cent extra that was left in her budget to go on her credit card to get that payment down. So we're going to say we have nothing in extra savings. So if you take her 2000 we had $1,359 in bills. She has $440 in her cash envelopes. She's doing $70 on her sinking funds, and she's paying $131 extra on her bills. And if you take the $2,000 minus the $1,359 minus the $440 minus the $70 minus the $132, that equals zero. 
That means every single dollar she has coming in has a job. So this is the zero based, it's a zero based budget, but it's not a full cash system because these are paid online. This is the cash here. And this is the cash here in her sinking funds. And then this one again will be paid online. But every single dollar she brings in has a job. Here, let me show you this really quick. Okay, let's say your payment, your minimum payment is $150, right? This is your minimum. And that's the payment that you're making because, you know, that that's the least amount you send in. Whether you can send more or not, this is the amount you send in. But now comes along that pesky little, that lovely little uh, interest. So let's say out of your $150, they're going to charge you $40. Let's say you have a horrible credit card. $40 in interest. Okay, so now your payment that you're making $150, but your balance is only going to go down by $110. Your $150 isn't going any, you know, isn't getting you very far because you're only making $110 headway on your card. But let's say you're making this minimum payment, but you're still having Hulu come out. So let's say you have a $10 Hulu. Well, now your payment that you're actually decreasing your balance is now only a hundred dollars. And let's say you have a cell phone coming out as well. Well, now you're looking at sixty dollars. So your hundred and fifty dollar payment is only getting you sixty dollars off your balance you're not going to get anywhere your minimum payment if you make a minimum payment on your credit card it could take you 20 25 even 30 years to pay off that card somewhere on your statement it will show you a box and it's going to tell you if you make this payment for minimum it's going to take you X amount of years to pay that off. If you pay this dollar amount in approximately three years, you will be debt free. But if you get to a point here where you're actually making that higher payment, you cannot have anything like this on your card. Or let's say they're telling you, okay, look, minimum was 150 but if you pay us 350 a month in three years it'll pay paid off if you still have these type of automatic payments coming on your card you're going to need to increase that by whatever these payments are because this amount is going to eat up that higher payment that you're trying to make so what we did is we took anything like this that was automatically drawing on our credit card and we switched these, these anything with a little asterisk, these were coming on our credit cards. We switched these, that these are all coming out directly from our account. So these are no longer drawing down the balances on our credit cards. All right, before we can get stuffing, we need to take care of everything from August that we have left. And here's our groceries. Here's gas. Nothing in health. Nothing in pet. I tell you it was a tough month. Nothing in emergency. And we have a little in eating out. Okay. Haha, I still have my hundred. I'm working on that terribly. Okay, so what we have decided to do is a few more savings challenges. Okay, so I have no 20s. Okay, well, all right, here's what we're doing. I am 
saving all of my ones, tens, and fives out of the cash envelopes, and I'm starting some extra savings funds. So all of the 20s or above, we're going to be towards our extra debt uh, payment. So the only thing I have left is $100. Um, that this is the one of the groceries. I'm telling you, give this a go, people. I will do everything I can to keep this bill. All right, so I have $100 that's going to go towards my extra payment for debt. So we have three tens, three fives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and eleven dollars in ones. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my binder and my ones, fives, and tens all have their own little compartment now. I grabbed our savings challenges, the one, the five, and the $10 savings challenges. All right, so we had 11 ones, so we'll go ahead and cross those off. That's 11. We had three fives, two, three. And we had three tens. We'll go ahead and slide those into our holders. Okay, let's get these stuffed. I'm gonna do this a little differently because I took you know, enough of your time already talking about the budget. I don't wanna take any more here. So um, we're gonna do the cash envelopes first. Groceries, first envelope is 400. I always start with a $100 bill. 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, and then the $100 that gives us 400. Okay, gas is our next one. Here, let me move this over. Gas is 400. 20, 40, 60, 81, 20, 40, 60, 82, 20, 40, 60, 83, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65, 75, 85, 95, and 400. Okay, that's gas. Next up is health. That is $100. Very easy. 20, 40, 60, 81. Pet needs ten dollars. We have our miscellaneous emergency that's fifty, twenty, forty, fifty. And our last one out of this group is eating out. Ugh, we should not be eating out. And that's sixty dollars. All right, let me grab everything for our sinking funds. We're gonna do the same thing with the sinking funds. I'm going to try to do this as fast we don't take your time. Christmas is $200. Put that aside. Birthdays, I have 45. So I have our youngest daughter, 10. Our oldest daughter, 10. My grandmother, 5. My parents, 10. And my husband and myself, 10. Then we have anniversaries for 15. We have my parents with five. We have ours for 10. Now we have Mother's Day. We have $15 for Mother's Day. We have $10 for Father's Day. Ugh, the water heater. I hate this one. I say it every month. I hate it. Water heater, 20, 40, 60, 75. It seems like we're just never going to get that one done. And then we have emergency for 35, 
2035 and that is $395. And let's do a quick update on the 52 week challenge. And here is the update on our 52 week challenge. We are doing $25 deposited on every Saturday. I can't believe we're here already. This would be the 35th week. We should have $875. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundred, twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, eight hundred, twenty, forty, sixty, seventy-five, eight seventy-five. We're still on track. I'm so excited. And the last thing, I started a new book. And all of the individual envelopes that I had made that we were doing, you know, little fun stuff, I transferred all of those that we were trying to save out of our cash envelopes. And here we are on August. And our goal was $60. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. All right, I hope for September, I hope to have $60 again. I hope that we stay on track for, with our 52 week challenge. And gang, we're wrapping up August. That is awesome. Everyone, thank you so much for sticking with us today. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful month keep saving, keep trying. Every day is a new day to save. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you so, so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Until next time, everybody be safe. We'll see you soon.